Hi all, this is Dr. Chaitra Shri from IKEA Fertility Center. So today I'm here to just discuss a few points about endometrial cancer. So what do you mean by endometrial cancer? So endometrial cancer, it's nothing but the cancer of the uterine lining. So when there is a tumor growth in the uterine lining, we refer it to as endometrial cancer. So why do you think this endometrial cancer will arise? So what are the risk factors which can lead to this endometrial cancer? Is when there is a prolonged exposure for the estrogen hormone, this endometrial cancer can be commonly seen. So when do you think uh, there will be prolonged exposure for the estrogen? So in certain conditions like uh, PCOD, where there will be an ovulatory cycles. That is, the egg doesn't become dominant and it doesn't ovulate. So, without the, uh, where the anovulatory cycles are seen, there will be prolonged exposure for the estrogen hormone. So, when there is prolonged ex uh, exposure for the estrogen hormone, so there is increased risk of development of this endometrial cancer. And it is also common in postmenopausal women who are taking this estrogen therapy. And also the nulliparis, uh, nulliparis in the sense who have not given birth to the child during their lifetime. So, at that time also there will be prolonged exposure of this estrogen hormone. So, who are at risk of this endometrial cancer and also the other condition like obesity. In obesity, so the peripheral androgens will be converted to the estrogen. So, there will be more estrogen exposure of the uterine lining to the estrogen. So, this condition also uh, results in increased risk of developing the endometrial cancer. This endometrial cancer, it is usually associated with hypertension and diabetes as well. So, and also the people who will be having the history of the early menarche and the late menopause. So, these people are also at risk of developing the endometrial cancer. So, what is the most common presentation of this endometrial cancer is? First of all, this is more common in the postmenopausal women. So, the postmenopausal women will usually present with history of the uh, postmenopausal bleeding. So, if a woman has attained the menopause, I mean to say, if she has... Uh, has had stopped her menstrual bleeding for about an year and later again it is followed by this uh, abnormal uterine bleeding or any brownish discharge then we definitely have to evaluate such women for the risk of endometrial cancer so okay in premenopausal women so usually they'll be having the normal menstrual flow but in case of uh, endometrial cancer they can present with abnormal uterine bleeding that is excessive menstrual bleeding during the menses, so which is not controlled with the medical line of management. So these could be the common presentations like the abnormal uterine bleeding, the postmenopausal bleeding or the postcoital bleeding and uh, even uh, if there is any hematuria that is passage of the blood in the urine or rectal bleeding that is passage of the blood in the stools. So all these unusual symptoms we have to pick it up and uh, investigate whether they are at risk of developing the endometrial cancer. So, if the woman is having abnormal uterine bleeding or any postmenopausal bleeding, then we'll definitely ask for a pelvic scan. So, mainly to look, to look at the endometrial thickness. So, in postmenopausal women, ideally, there will not be any estrogen exposure of the uh, estrogen exposure to the lining, so the lining doesn't grow. So, the lining should ideally be less than 5 mm. But in postmenopausal women, if the lining is more than 5 mm, then we definitely have to investigate them. And in premenopausal women, if they give like history of the abnormal uterine bleeding, that is heavy menstrual flow, so they also have to be looked upon. So, what do we do next is we take an endometrial sampling, that is, we pass a pipple into the uterine cavity and scrape the endometrium and send it for testing to know what is the condition or the status of the cells in the uterine lining. Are they normal or cancerous or precancerous? So, this will help us in diagnosing whether the woman is at risk of developing endometrial cancer. So, this is one of the investigation. So, if at all the biopsy report says that it is cancerous, then the next we have to think about the next line of management. So, if the biopsy report comes to be positive, then the other investigation what we suggest is uh, we suggest the MRI. So, we suggest MRI to know whether the cancerous lesion is just confined to the uterus or it has spread to the distant structures 
uh, nearby or the distant places it has spread. So we need to get one MRI to know about what is the uh, extent of the lesion, extent of the cancerous lesion we need to know. Then after uh, next after the MRI, then how do we manage such patients? So how can we manage such patients? So surgery is the main uh, line of uh, the mainstay of the treatment in case of endometrial carcinoma. That is, we have to remove the uterus, we have to remove the, the site of uh, estrogen production, that is the ovaries, then we have to remove the fallopian tubes. So usually when we do the staging of the disease to know in what stage the patient is. In simple words, I'm just telling about the staging of the uh, endometrial carcinoma. In stage 1, the lesion is just confined to the uterus. In stage 2, it is spread to the cervix, that is the mouth of the uterus. And in stage 3, it is spread to the fallopian tubes. And in stage 4, it is like distant spread. It is spread, spread to the peritoneum or it the spread could, could be to the liver, spleen. So, all these distant organs also. So, in stage 1, definitely the line of treatment is we have to remove the uterus along with the fallopian tubes and ovaries. So, 3 and 4, it goes the same. And again, depending upon the biopsy report, then we'll decide whether we have to give any radiation therapy or any chemotherapy for the patient. And in stage 4, that is in the advanced stages, we give certain uh, chemotherapy or radiotherapy mainly uh, that is to uh, symptomatically uh, reduce the symptoms of the patient. So that is about the stage 4. So the next would be, uh, yeah, how can we prevent this disease? Definitely uh, following a healthy lifestyle can prevent uh, these uh, kind of endometrial carcinoma. So as I already mentioned that obesity is one of the risk factors. So, following a healthy lifestyle and uh, uh, keeping the weight in the normal BMI range, all these will help to prevent the disease. And there should, definitely there should not be any uh, unopposed estrogen exposure. That is in case of PCOS patients, so they have to be uh, given the progesterone tablets to regularize their menstrual cycles and uh, childbearing will also help to prevent the endometrial carcinoma. Because in the childbearing period, the lining is not much exposure to the estrogen. Okay, then uh, yeah, this is about the endometrial carcinoma.